great. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Apologies for the delay, bit of a technical glitch. My, uh, my video guy said that I was uh, being seen sideways, so I figured nobody should be subjected to that. How are you all out there in Facebook land? Welcome to our 10th Ask Anthony uh, on Facebook Live. I'm Anthony Peluso, founder of Wealth for Life and Australian property expert. So the topic I'm gonna to talk about today is the question that uh, we get in here literally every week, and I'm sure you've, you've heard it yourself if you're an investor or someone starting out. Um, should I buy my own home first or invest in property first? Which one do I do? Now, um, before I get started, um, I'm gonna let you guys know, because it's our 10th episode, we're gonna be giving away an Apple Watch uh, to the best question asked today, okay? So um, we're also gonna give extra points to anybody that shares this stream. And the winner is going to be announced in next Tuesday's episode, correct, Sheree? Yes, that's next correct. Next week's episode, we're going to announce the winner. So ask away. This is your opportunity. It can be about the subject I'm talking about or anything else that you want to discuss or ask questions on. All right. So um, my own home to live in or investment property, which one do I do first? Um, you know, here, here's my view on it and here's my experience on it because I actually uh, asked myself this question um, oh, 19, 19 years ago, I think it was. So, many, people's out, many people out there right now, many families out there are struggling, okay, to get ahead, right? We've got rising healthcare and medical expenses. We've got, you know, wages that aren't growing, you know, the way they should be. We've got, you know, lots of bills, especially if you've got kids. You all know how expensive they are, right? And we see a lot of people that, that actually are struggling to get by. So, my question would always be, why do you need to add to that burden by paying off a mortgage on your own home, all right? Because a lot of this stuff, a lot of stuff we see from people with regards to, you know, financial stress is actually, believe it or not, caused by themselves, all right? Um, my simple explanation is don't go buying your own home, okay? Now, I'm gonna talk about why you don't buy your own home, but I'm not saying you don't buy your own home ever. It, should, it shouldn't be a priority. Okay, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll explain why, right? Um, first of all, it's, you know, our banks have a lot to do with this. They, this has been dubbed the great Australian dream, right? We all want our own home, right? The reality is that it's actually a liability, okay? It doesn't pay you, um, it doesn't give you an income. In fact, it requires that you pay it, right? So, you know, if you're like me, you grew up being told by your parents, by your friends, you know, you've got to get your own home, save a deposit, you've got to get your own home. When you get your own home, then you've made it, right? You're all familiar with that, right? Because we all, you know, we all grew up here in the same thing. It gives people that sense of security like they've got their own home, right? But the thing is that, like, it takes up so much time, energy, resource, so much of your money. And do you really have security if all you've got is your own home, right? Um, it's like what I, what I say to people, if buying your own home is important to you, you should do it. But do it in the same way that you would, you know, you'd buy a car, you'd buy, you'd buy a handbag, you'd buy a watch, you'd buy a phone. Too many people put so much emphasis on buying their own home that it, that, that it gets them to just, they're so focused on buying their own home, they forget what's really important out there, okay? You, you don't get any assistance to buy your own home in terms of, there's not a tenant helping you with a mortgage, right? And the, the fact of the matter is that when you've got your own home, 100% of the mortgage is paid by you. And what's even worse, it's paid for with after-tax dollars. You earn 100,000, 30 grand goes to the bank, 70 grand throughout that year goes into your bank account. From that $70,000, you've got to cover bills, you've got to cover expenses, and you've got to cover a mortgage. And then, you try and save if you've got any money left over. We all know there's hardly any money left over. So why this emphasis and why this burden of people, you know, putting so much, um, connecting so much emotion to actually buying their own home? Um, you know, we have this thing that, you know, in this country, you haven't made it if you don't buy your own home. Well, here's my view on it. Don't buy your own home until you've made it financially. Okay, because there's actually a much smarter and a much better way to buy your own home, and even a faster way, to be honest with you, right? Um, you know, houses, as an example, let me give you an example. Houses weren't built for people, okay? 
Um, I know it sounds crazy, but I, I keep telling my staff here that um, you really got to understand when it comes to building wealth, it's not about property. Okay, it's about finance. It's about money. Learn to master the art of finance. Okay, um, here I am, a property. Here we are, a property company, telling you it's not about property. Property is nothing more than a tool to attract finance. Okay, some time ago, banks got together and said, you know what? Um, we need to make more money. We need to lend more money. We're going to lend money that we don't even have to people out there. But what do we need? A security. What are we going to create? A security. We can't use businesses because businesses are too risky. We can't use shares. Shares are too risky. So what are we going to use? Let's create this thing called property. Let's go tell everybody that they need to buy their own home. Then they'll come to us, borrow money. We'll charge them interest on it. They'll get a loan for 25 to 35 years. Very few people will default on it. Why? Because it's an emotional purchase. Right? And, and let's face it, guys, nobody wants to wake up on a Saturday morning, go down and get coffee, tell their friends what they did and say, oh, listen, I defaulted on my mortgage last week. So people have pride, so they're never going to default on their home loan. The banks got very clever and said, let's create some security, wrap it up with emotion and call it the great Australian dream. People will come to us to borrow money. We will charge them a fortune. We'll keep a loan running for 25, 30 years. Banks will make a fortune, lending you money that they don't even have themselves and making money on it. And we all got sucked into to, to basically focusing on this one thing and this one thing only, and that was buying your own home to live in. Okay. Now again, I'm not saying you don't do that, but you've got to do that, in my opinion, once you've made it financially. Here's why. <clears throat> First of all, a home is not an asset. Okay, It doesn't pay you each month, it doesn't pay you an income, and in fact it actually requires you to pay it. Right? When you've got an investment property as an example, you get paid each month, and it doesn't. the property doesn't care who owns it. Right? So if you've structured yourself correctly, you, you know, you, your property, your investment property could be as little as what, 10 bucks a day, all right? Number two, you get no assistance to pay off your mortgage, okay? Like I said before, you've got to pay the mortgage yourself. The household income is responsible for covering that mortgage, okay? Now, with an investment property, the government gives you a check at the end of each year, all right, to help you pay off your mortgage and the expenses, and you get income from a tenant. And again, from the way that we do business here with our clients and the way our clients get structured here, you know, they're paying such a small portion of their mortgage. The government and the tenant pays off a majority of the mortgage, all right? Now, here's the other thing too. When you're buying your own home, because it is an emotional purchase, most people will all, most people will overcapitalize, all right? They'll, um, you know, they'll start making improvements to it, renovating it, um, changing stuff, painting it. And before they'll real, they realize, any surplus money they have is gone and, and, and being spent on their own home. Now, <coughs> You can't, you know, when, when you're doing something like that, um, it, it just consumes you. When you look at an investment property, the only thing you should be worried about when you've got an investment property is profit and cash flow. So you don't have that emotion attached to it, right? When you buy it, when you're buying an investment property, um, usually what we see, there's no equity left in one's own home if people get too emotionally attached to it. As soon as they've got equity, they borrow against it to improve the house to an extension. It all goes towards the house. So there's really never any equity for them to think outside of that and look at a, a, another property, an investment property, right? Because we're talking about here, do I buy my own home first or do I buy an investment property? And I'm here to tell you, buy an investment property first because it will help you get your own home much fa much faster and actually you get, you'll get more choices. If you stick with me throughout this, um, this, um, this Facebook Live, I'll share that with you, right? Um, when you're buying an investment property, you get to leverage the equity in your first investment property to buy your second investment property and so on and so on and so on. And you know, the first deal is always the hardest to, to, to get into with an investment property, but as soon as you get the first one done, the second, third and fourth are actually so much easier, right? Um, and again, probably the biggest observation I've made with people that buy their own home is this. People get too comfortable in their own home. They've got their home, they think they've made it. Right? They're, you know, let's face it guys, it's an emotional decision. Most of us do it to please somebody else. Whether it be a spouse, whether it be a parent, whether it be friends, hey look, I've got my own home. So people, you know, they get their own home, they feel like they've made it, right? It's a false sense of security, right? Um, if you're in your own home, you've made it, right? There's no security though if you lose your job and the only income 
that you're getting at the moment. You've got your own home, you're paying it off, you lose your job, and you lose the only income you ever had. Where's the security in that? Okay? A better option would be get your own home last. This is my own experience. Um, see, when you continually invest, right, you have that motivation, that drive to get your own home. So you're investing. One of, the, one of the purposes a lot of our clients actually have is to actually get their own home. So they'll start investing, creating equity, um, getting cash flow, and then they'll use in the future a portion of that equity. Uh, we'll take some questions in a minute. Uh, they'll take a, a portion of that equity and they'll use that as a deposit for their own home, right? Or they'll sell off a couple of investment properties, get a substantial chunk of cash and use that to buy their own home with, a very, with very little mortgage. So the more you invest, and, and, and the more you invest, the more that hunger, the more you have that hunger and that drive to get your own home. Because you're not resting on your laurels, you haven't made it, right? You're not comfortable when you, you know, you're not comfortable if you continue to invest and invest and invest and invest. You've got a purpose that you're trying to achieve and a goal that you're going for. But if you get your own home first, most people get comfortable. Hey, I've made it, I've got my own home, I don't need to do anything else, I've paid my mortgage off, everything's fine, I've got my job. They still haven't figured out that when they stop working, the money stops coming in. And when they do figure it out, it's way too late. And then they become desperate. And unfortunately, we all know what people with a desperate mindset and desperate state of mind end up doing. They usually end up losing all their money, okay? So the strongest passion, the strongest motivation people have is to get their own home. I get that. Invest first, get some good cash behind you, some good equity behind you. When you go buy your own home, you can pay a majority of it with the equity you've created from your investments. Your mortgage is much, much less. You don't have that stress of paying off that mortgage with your working income after tax dollars because the mortgage is much, much less. You do it, you do it in a smart way. You can use the equity to pay, to pay cash, to, to, to pay for your own home, okay? You get more choices as well because um, the more wealth you create, the more the better house you can afford, all right? Um, and you know the reality is a lot of people, and you know, and God bless my, my parents as well had had a similar mindset. You know, I'll pay off my own home first, and then I'll invest. Who wants to wait thirty years? Who wants to wait twenty five years before they have money? Right? Having an investment property enables you to actually earn money and, and cash flow and equity whilst you're young. All right. Um, just just remember that the the tenant and the tax man is paying the majority of it off for you. Right. Um, having your own home too keeps you in one place. It keeps you fixed in one place. You, you know, you're limited then to any job opportunities you can have interstate, overseas. You're kind of stuck in one place because if you want to move, you've got to sell up your home. And yeah, sure, you can put a tenant in there, but most people's houses become so beautiful that they actually don't want a tenant in there. Now, having an investment property gives you that, or, or even renting, right? Um, I don't think rent, rent is not a, renting is not a bad thing. Okay. There's this mindset out there you shouldn't rent because it's wasted money. What's wasted money is the money that you're not putting towards an investment property. I know multiple, multiple like billionaires actually that actually um, one guy up in Sydney that I know quite well who's got um, he's got a beautiful penthouse just underneath the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Right? He rents it. Why? Because he's just all over the world, and he does he, he can't he doesn't have the time to get fixated on one place. So he, he, he buys for, he, he rents for lifestyle, for conveniency. It sits right underneath the Harbour Bridge. He keeps raving on to me how he's got the closest place. Um, his house is the, is the closest to the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House, right, in that, in that, in that position. And um, here's a, you know, a, a guy that's doing extremely well financially, but will never buy his own home. Why? Because he's on the move all the time. So um, it keeps you down in the one in the one place, and it doesn't enable you to, to to change locations. Now, if you want to know the fastest way to pay off your own home, for those of you that have ever wondered, how do I pay off my own home faster? Right, the fastest way to pay off your mortgage is to invest. Right, build equity in your investment properties, use the equity, or sell off some properties to to pay off a mortgage. Right, or better still, use the equity in your properties to actually as a deposit to buy your own home. Okay. As I said before, it keeps you motivated, it keeps you driven, you're never comfortable, okay? Um, so when you're buying your own home too, if you're like a lot of the first home buyers, right? Because let's face it, the average home these days sits at around $800,000. You're limited to what you can actually buy, okay? 
if you want a better house, invest your invest in assets that allow you enough cash flow and enough equity to then go out and buy the, the house of your dreams, right? Because think of it like this, the only thing you've got going for you when you're buying your own, if you want to buy your own home first, is your own income, right? Think about that for a minute. You're limited to the household income that's available, okay? Um, so your, your resources are limited. But if you had, because let, let's face it, when you're buying investment properties, what you're buying is income. You're buying other streams of income. You've got your working income, then you've got you know uh, income that comes from your assets, right? Um, leveraged income. So you're looking to set up as many income streams as possible, right? And when it comes to then buying your own home, you've got your work income, you've got income from your investment properties, <clears throat> you've got equity from your investment properties, it gives you more choices to potentially buy a bigger home, a better home in a better location, something closer to your dream home, all right? Um, buying your own home first drains too much money, I've covered it off earlier, drains too much money out of your pocket, okay? Um, you know, I'll, I'm gonna give you guys an example in a minute of just how much money um, would, would be coming out of your pocket, but because you, you, you pay, you, you're the one paying for the mortgage, you're not getting any assistance from the government or a tenant, you know, banks actually even get funny if more than I think 40% of your income goes towards your own mortgage, okay? They get uncomfortable. So um, it just takes up too much of your money and it puts too much pressure on families. And I've, we see this every day, okay? Um, you know, again, if you're looking at an investment property done correctly, if you bought the right property and you've got your finances structured correctly, it could cost you as little as 50 bucks a week. You know, I mean, what's that, seven bucks a day or something like that? The cost of a coffee, right? Um, you know, and the other thing too, when you've got your own home and you go for an investment property while well, you're looking to invest, actually works against you. So the size of your mortgage and how much of your income goes towards the property actually works against you. Funny thing is, every time you buy an investment property, the rent gets added on top of your serviceability, all right? So if you're earning, say, $100,000 a year, you buy an investment property and you're getting $16,000 in rent on that property, your, uh, your income now is $116,000. That's what the banks take into account when you're going for a loan. So it actually works for you, right, in terms of serviceability, because now the banks add in another income stream, all right? Um, it's always gonna cost you more money um, compared to, buying your own home is always gonna cost you more money compared to having an investment property. Let me give you an example, right? I, I put together a case study here. If you take a fight, this is, Assuming you're buying your own home right now to live in, right? You guys can do the maths, right? Online, or in the comfort of your own home, right? Let's say you're buying your own home to live in, right? You're looking at a $550,000 home, okay? Assuming that you, you've got the deposit, you, you've borrowed all the money, right? Parents have helped you out, right? So this doesn't assume that you've put any of your own deposit in there, right? Uh, a $550,000 property on a 4% interest rate, principal and interest, right? Interest rate, so what I mean that, by that is that you're paying the mortgage down and you're paying the interest that you owe to the bank, right? So something like that, and let's say you're earning $100,000 a year in income, which actually doesn't even come into account, that's costing you roughly $777 per week, right? $40,000 a year to pay a mortgage on your own home. Now, you're earning $100,000, you only get $70,000 of that, right? I'm just using the tax rates, right, in your pocket. From that $70,000, $40,000 needs to go towards a mortgage, right? Think about it, can you really live on $30,000 a year? Right? Now, let's flip to an investment property. You go buy the same property, right, $550,000, right? Um, again, we assume that you've put none of your deposit, none of your cash in there to keep it equal, right? On a 5% interest rate, because interest rates on investments are a little bit more, but it's an interest only loan, right? A property like that where you're getting $425 a week in rent, which is very easily achieved, right? For, for an investment property worth 550, $425 a week in rent on an income of $100,000 a year will cost you out of pocket approximately $70 a week. That's $10 a day. Think about that for a minute. You have an investment property that grows in value, right? That appreciates each year that pays you rent and it costs you $10 a day. This cost me $5 this morning. 
It costs me two of these a day to hold on to an investment property that'll probably make me, you know, forty to fifty thousand dollars a year and give me strong cash flow. I can then use the equity in that property to do the next one, the next one, the next one, and the next one for a couple of these, two of these a day. Okay? You see the difference between having your own home and having an investment. One drains so much money out of your pocket. The other one, you know, because of the uh, because of the incentives you get from the government and the tenants, or the incentives you get from the government and, and, and the cash, the rent you get from the tenant, plus all the depreciation you get to claim, right off your taxable income, costs you next to nothing. So here's my question, how many properties could you afford to buy if they only cost you $10 a day, right? So set up your investment portfolio first, set yourself up financially first. Make it your goal to own your own home. Don't do it first, it puts you too far behind the eight ball if you're looking to create wealth. If you do what most Australians are being brought up to do, buy your own home, buy your own home, buy your own home, pay off the mortgage as fast as possible, and then you've made it. Here's the thing, ask yourself this question, what happens when you stop working? Where does the money come from? Okay? Because you'll find out way too late in life that it was the wrong thing to do. Okay? So what we educate all our clients and all my staff here to do, set yourself up financially first, where you have no more attention on money. Then if you've done the job correctly and you've built up strong equity and, and really, really good cash flow, you can go out and cut a check for your own dream home, knowing full well that your mortgage on that's gonna be so little you're not gonna care. And if you've done really well, you can actually sell off a couple of properties, investment properties, use that money to pay for your, your, your own home outright. No mortgage, no nothing, no stress, no having to fund it with after-tax dollars, okay? So that's my view on whether you should buy your own home or whether you should buy an investment first. Not everyone's gonna agree with me, my advice to you is do your maths first, okay? It makes no sense to anyone I've seen, or even myself, to, to you know, if, you, if you're starting the property market, to go buy your own home, okay? You're just gonna restrict your resources available to you, the money available to you, and it'll be a long time before you get into an investment property, okay? So, um, let's see, how are we going with questions? Um, <clears throat> My biggest concern is, uh, that's a great question, Lee Wheeler. My biggest concern is I will miss out on the first homeowner's grant. I get that, Lee, um, and, and that may be the case. <clears throat> Here's my view on that though. I think the government's gonna keep that in place for a long, 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 long time. What's the first homeowner's grant? <clears throat> first homeowner's grant, and don't quote me on this, um, I think it's $10,000 for Metro, and $20,000 outside Metro, right? The government funds you to get into your own home. I get that. The reality is this, if you buy the right investment property, you know, underpinned by really good finance, you'll have you'll create that in a year anyway, okay? You'll create more than that in a year. So your, your first homeowner's grant will be taken care of by the equity that you build in your, in your investment portfolio, all right? Uh, Marty, well, hi Anthony, rental return or capital growth? Um, Okay, so here's my view. Um, and again, I've studied the market for 20 years and not everyone's gonna agree with me here, okay? Um, if you're looking, at, again, it depends on what you're looking to achieve. So you always gotta have the end in mind first, Marty. If you're looking to build wealth, you must have capital growth as your key, in your, in your, your number one criteria when investing. Okay, because if you if you if you buy a whole bunch of investment properties that don't appreciate in value, what good are they to you? Okay, now I'm not a fan of negative gearing. I just want to I want to outlay that. Okay, I'm not a fan of negative gearing, and you should not be going out to buy property because of the tax benefits and the depreciation you get, because that's dumb. Okay, the number one criteria is capital growth, right? And then you need very good cash flow. Because you've got properties out there in you know in rural Victoria, New South Wales, whoop whoop, right? That'll pay you fifty dollars a week. Now, if you're trying to replace an income of a hundred thousand dollars a year, how many properties do you need to pay you fifty dollars a week before you can replace a hundred thousand dollar a year income? Okay, it becomes crazy. All right. So, 
you need strong, you need good rent, you need good rent, and this is why property manager is so important. One of the episodes I'm going to come up and do very soon is I'm going to, I'm going to really, I'm going to really upset the property managers out there, okay? Because I think most of them have no idea okay, when it comes to managing property, and I'm going to share my views on property management in one of the coming episodes of Facebook Live. You don't want to miss that because I have a viewpoint right now that if property managers took on what I, what I say, my viewpoint, tenants would be. Um, Landlords would be getting more and more rent. Uh, they'd get an increase every uh, every year, and tenants as well would be very very happy in those properties. Okay, so stay tuned for that one when we've got that one coming up. So Marty, hopefully I've answered your question there. Um, good capital growth, but you need you need good rent as well. Okay, but just don't make rent the the primary um, the primary focus because there's nothing worse than a property that doesn't appreciate in value, okay? If you wanna get more technical, there's some advanced investment strategies that we utilize where you can get a really, you, you can really supercharge your, your cash flow from property and um, your capital growth as well, but I'll leave that for another time. Um, so, um, hopefully guys, you've got a lot out of that um, and I've answered that question for you. Again, I know that everyone's not gonna agree with that. Um, but I just ask you guys, before you go out and buy your own home, please do the maths on this, okay? And ask yourself, what else in life do you need other than your own home? Have you really made it financially? Have you really, do you really have that sense of security if you've got your own home and nothing else, meaning no other income stream, okay? Just, just ponder that question before you go out and buy your own home. I'm not saying you never buy your own home, okay? Um, just, does it need to be a priority? Is it the first thing you do? Ask yourself that question, okay? Have another uh, question. We have another question. Who have we got here? Josh. Um, Josh, I want to invest. Josh asked the question, I want to invest but don't know where to start. Yeah, it's a very good question, Josh. Um, listen, uh, again, I could, talk, I, I could talk about this. I think one of my episodes, face, Facebook Live number two or number three, I, I cover off on that. Um, start with the end in mind, Josh. Start with the end in mind, okay? Ask yourself this question, why do you want to invest? All right? What is it that you're looking to achieve? Okay? And from there, work backwards. Okay? You know, there's nothing worse than going out and buying property just for the sake of buying property. And how do you know how many properties is enough? How many how do you know if these properties are gonna help you achieve your goal? Because Josh, my question to you, buddy, would be you want to invest for a reason, right? And I'm guessing it's gonna be, you know, wealth to, to create wealth, right? Financial freedom. So, are you buying the, the type? You need to buy a specific type of properties to help you get that. And in what time frame, Josh, do you want to do it in? And how will you know when you've made it? How, when, how will you know when to stop? If you stop. So, when's enough enough? So, start with the end in mind. And the end in mind could be something like this, Josh. Um, you know, get a pen and paper out and say, I want to earn an income stream of $200,000 a year, as an example, without having to work. Because most people's reason for investing is a cash flow goal, okay? We want to create a lifestyle where we don't depend on banks. We choose to work only if we want to and we're not restricted financially. That's freedom, okay? When you can get up in the morning and do whatever you want in between and go to bed at night without being restricted financially, legally, obviously, and ethically, um, that's a pretty cool position to be in, okay? So work out, Josh, what you're trying to achieve um, and then work it backwards from there. Or come in and have a chat to myself or one of the guys in here, we can help you do that. It's it's not too difficult, okay? We'll take you through a couple of questions, we'll give you a, a blueprint of exactly um, what you need to do once we get some information from you. All right, but great question, Josh. Um, <sighs> Lee, have you invested in other assets? Um, I have, Lee. Um, I've invested in shares, I've invested in the stock market. Um, I'm not. A, I'm not active or, or I'm not aggressive in that in that area. Um, so my expertise more sits around real estate, residential real estate, um, you know, and different types of real estate, um, but pre predominantly residential real estate. If you want to know about the share market or the stock market, we have our advisors in here can talk to you about that. But me personally. I'm a, I'm a property guy. I, I, I've created all my wealth through real estate and businesses. So I've invested in businesses. Um, so yeah. Um, uh, a couple more, couple more. Lots of people there, no one asking that. 
many more. Okay, we've, okay, we've got all that. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. Uh, you're probably on a lunch break now, so make sure you get back to work. Um, so hopefully you got something out of this episode, guys. Um, we're going to be giving away a Christmas, Christmas promotion as well, okay? We're going to be giving away some really cool stuff, um, some stuff that you have on your, uh, on your wrist, some stuff that you probably all play with at night, which is technical gadget. I've got to be careful what I say there. God, that, that almost got me uh, thrown off Facebook. Um, just stay tuned to next week's episode. And my, my staff right now are just shaking their head going, of a, of a technical nature, IT, okay? <laughs> um, so, ask more questions with regards to the episode we've just covered off on. We're gonna be giving away a, um, an Apple Watch, as I mentioned earlier on. And next week, um, again, I get these questions from you guys, and, and I wanna run these episodes based on what you guys wanna hear, okay? It's not about me, it, it's, it's about you guys. What is it that, um, that takes up your attention out there that uh, you guys want answers to. Next week we've got we're going to answer the question: Should I buy established property, so property that already exists, or off the plan property, so property that's yet to be built? Okay, so I'll cover that off next week and, and go through that and um, hope to see you guys then. So thank you again for tuning in. Um, send through any questions you've got and um, thanks to my guys for putting this on. I really appreciate it. 10 episodes, right? Yeah, 10, is we're, uh, we're, we're gonna just keep doing these every week. I enjoy these guys. I hope you guys enjoy listening in. Um, I have a lot of fun with these. The topics are, are topics that, um, you know, th that the people out there wanna hear about and that are making headlines in, in, the, in the media right now. And they are things that you need to, need to observe and, and get and take into account before you go making any financial decision. So um, thank you once again, and I'll see you all next Tuesday at 12 o'clock.